In this screencast, we will cover the CT findings of COVID-19, the disease associated with the new coronavirus. I want to give special thanks to Adam Bernheim for providing multiple cases of confirmed COVID-19 pneumonia. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to identify and describe the spectrum of findings in viral pneumonia and explain a basic algorithm for managing patients with suspected viral pneumonia in a radiology department. The first thing I want to say is that the findings are not specific to COVID-19. I will show you cases of COVID-19 and suspected COVID-19, but these cases have a pattern on CT that's consistent with acute lung injury or organizing pneumonia. And there is a broad differential diagnosis that includes multiple different types of viral pneumonia, some atypical bacterial pneumonias, drug-induced acute lung injury, and also cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, which is an idiopathic form of primary organizing pneumonia. Because the findings are nonspecific, clinical context is key. Most of the patients presenting with COVID-19 have a fever as one of their first symptoms. And then the other symptoms that are often seen are shortness of breath, cough, and fatigue. Interestingly, most cases are not presenting with rhinorrhea or a runny nose. Now let's talk about the CT findings associated with viral pneumonia. Early in the disease process, the pattern seen on CT tends to be dominated by bilateral peripheral ground glass opacities. These ground glass opacities tend to have a rounded morphology, but are not necessarily nodules with well-defined margins. Consolidation can be superimposed on the ground glass opacities, but earlier cases have a lower incidence of consolidation and tend to be ground glass predominant. Again, discrete nodules are not being reported, so well-defined nodules are not being reported. Pleural effusions are not characteristic of the disease, and lymphadenopathy is not characteristic. As the disease progresses, the ground glass opacification tends to become more confluent. It often remains peripheral, but it can become more diffuse throughout the lung. Crazy paving is being reported, which is actually a pattern within the ground glass opacification where there's also septal line thickening that creates the look of stone pavers. Later in the disease, consolidation is more commonly reported, and that consolidation is often superimposed on the areas of ground glass opacification. There's also a report of linear opacities developing later in the disease process, and those linear opacities being associated with architectural distortion. And within the areas of opacification, we can see bronchiolar dilation that may not be present in the spared parts of the lung. Let's talk a little bit about what ground glass means. So I have an example of ground glass in the center of the image here. And that is the kind of glass that is often used for glass stoppers. Um, it's often seen on slides in pathology. And what you can think of ground glass as being as incomplete alveolar filling. And that incomplete alveolar filling increases the density of the lung and makes the lung look somewhat white on CT. We can compare this lung that has diffuse ground glass opacity to this normal lung and you can see the increased density due to partial alveolar filling. This is not a case of COVID-19. This is diffuse ground glass opacification related to a different process. Now let's look at consolidation. Here we have a normal lung, nice and black with the vessels and the airways easily seen. And over here we have a lung with 
diffuse consolidation. This is a person with ARDS, or acute respiratory distress syndrome, and that consolidation is complete alveolar filling. That's why it looks more dense than the ground glass opacities, and you also start to see the airways within the opacities as air bronchograms, and you no longer see distinct vessels within the area of consolidation. And that is sort of a, a graphical representation of complete alveolar filling or consolidation. This is the ground glass opacity compared to consolidation. Notice you can see the vessels within the ground glass opacities, and we don't have air bronchograms. All right, so let's get to some cases of COVID-19. Here we have a case care of Adam Bernheim at Mount Sinai showing early ground glass opacities. These are small, ill-defined ground glass opacities with a rounded configuration. Here we have a patient presenting with fever and respiratory symptoms who had a flu negative and traditional viral panel negative uh, PCR and is therefore under investigation for COVID-19 infection. And we can see these ill-defined ground glass opacities with a rounded morphology in the periphery of the left upper lobe. In addition to traditional ground glass opacities with a rounded morphology, at times people are reporting with COVID-19 and other viral pneumonias a more dense round opacity. This is progressing from ground glass opacification really to more of the focal consolidation, but you can see it remains peripheral and poorly defined. This is another patient under investigation, and in this case we can see these ground glass opacities in the periphery of the lung, which are starting to become confluent. So you could imagine that maybe there were two or three nodules here, and now those nodules have increased in size, creating a confluent peripheral ground glass opacity. When you see the ground glass opacities with superimposed consolidation, we can see here in a patient under investigation, an area of peripheral ground glass opacification with a more focal area of consolidation superimposed on the ground glass opacification. This is a case of confirmed COVID-19 where the patient has this peripheral area of consolidation, although there do remain some areas of ground glass opacification within the more consolidative airspace opacities. In more progressed or severe cases of COVID-19, you may see diffuse ground glass opacification with areas of consolidation. So in this case, the the process is still predominantly peripheral. It's ground glass predominant, diffuse lung disease with areas of developing consolidation. This is another case of severe COVID pneumonia. And in this case, we start to see more of that architectural distortion. So it almost looks like the lung is tethered or being pulled, and we start to see these more linear opacities in addition to the areas of consolidation and ground glass opacification. Another finding that's being reported is bronchiolar dilation in the region of pulmonary abnormality. So we have these areas of ground glass opacity that are peripheral and are starting to have superimposed consolidation. And notice the bronchi within these regions of airspace opacification are dilated and more prominent than in the part of the lung that does not have ground glass or consolidation. Again, 
bronchiolar dilation in the regions of pulmonary abnormality. This is again a case of severe confirmed COVID-19 pneumonia. This is a nice example of the linear opacities that are sometimes reported. This patient had ground glass predominant disease, but if you look in the right middle lobe here, you can start to see some linear opacities. These linear opacities spread throughout the lung are associated with some ground glass opacity and some consolidation. And we can also see bronchiolar dilation. So you see these dilated bronchioles in the area, or bronchi, in the area of abnormality. So you get bronchial dilation or bronchiolar dilation in the areas of abnormality. Again, a case of confirmed COVID-19 that's relatively severe, but notice predominantly we have peripheral patchy ground glass opacification with some areas of developing consolidation. Now let's talk about some pitfalls to avoid. We need to make sure that we are not calling atelectasis as organizing pneumonia, viral pneumonia, or raising the concern for COVID. Atelectasis can have linear opacities. Okay, these linear opacities tend to be in the dependent portions of the lungs and in the lower lobes, and they are often due to poor inspiratory effort. Okay, you can also get peripheral ground glass opacification related to atelectasis, but that peripheral ground glass opacification is usually limited or isolated to the dependent portions of the lungs. Let's look at a few more cases. When we see this peripheral ground glass opacification in the dependent portion of the lung, we often provide a differential diagnosis of atelectasis or early fibrosis. And when we perform high resolution chest CT to assess for fibrosis, we may put the patient in a prone position to shift what the dependent portion of the lung is to the anterior lung and see if this resolves. If it didn't resolve, it'd be fibrosis. If it does resolve, it's probably atelectasis. But what this is not is patchy peripheral ground glass opacity as you would see in organizing pneumonia or a viral pneumonia. It's very symmetric. It's isolated to the dependent portions of the lungs, okay? Not organizing pneumonia. This is atelectasis or maybe early fibrosis. In viral pneumonia or coronavirus associated pneumonia, consolidation does not predominate. This is a case of classic bacterial pneumonia in a segmental distribution, almost a low bar distribution. So this is bacterial pneumonia with consolidation being the predominant finding. Here we have a case of a patient with dysphagia who presented after large volume aspiration and respiratory distress, we can see that consolidation is the predominant pattern. We may have some patchy areas of ground glass opacification, but consolidation is the predominant pattern. And consolidation is not the predominant pattern in organizing pneumonia. Organizing pneumonia or viral pneumonia does not tend to be nodular. So here we have multiple well-defined nodules throughout the lungs. These are perilymphatic nodules associated with co-workers pneumoconiosis. And we also have an area of developing progressive massive fibrosis. So this is not ground glass opacity. This is predominantly nodular. Here we have some ground glass nodules that are all clustered together in a patient with dysphagia who had an aspiration episode. And this is aspiration pneumonitis or maybe developing aspiration pneumonia. It's certainly patchy and ground glass. It is not peripheral in this case. It's isolated to the lower lobes and it's unilateral. Here we have another case of multiple nodules. These are micro nodules in a perilymphatic pattern 
in the setting of sarcoidosis. There may be a little bit of patchy ground glass here, okay? But the predominant pattern is perilymphatic nodules. And this is sarcoidosis. This pattern should not be mistaken for organizing pneumonia. Reports of the organizing pneumonia associated with COVID-19 are that it is bilateral and tends to affect multiple lobes. Here we have a case of acute lung injury or a pulmonary infarction that is related to an acute pulmonary embolus. We have ground glass opacification. We have developing or superimposed consolidation, but it's unilateral. It's isolated to a single segment of the lung, and this would be unlikely to represent organizing pneumonia given its unilateral and unilobar distribution. Now let's discuss what to do when you find a case of classic viral pneumonia on chest CT. If the patient had a low pretest probability for viral pneumonia, you could use language like findings most consistent with atypical infection, including viral pneumonia. If the patient had a high pretest probability of COVID-19 infection, you might consider stronger language, such as findings are compatible with COVID-19 infection, however other atypical infections or other causes of organizing pneumonia can present similarly. It's also very important when you see a suspected case of viral pneumonia to call the clinician, discuss your suspicion of viral pneumonia with them, and get a sense for their suspicion of disease as well. Always document your communication, including how you contacted the person, who you spoke with, and the date and time of the communication. You should also consider alerting the technologists to suspected cases of viral pneumonia or COVID-19 infections. And if there is a high suspicion of viral pneumonia or COVID-19 infections, you may consider doing a terminal clean on the CT room. And in some institutions, they may be taking the CT scanner out of service for one hour between a patient with suspected COVID-19 infection and a patient with a different clinical problem. For patients under investigation for COVID-19 infection or patients presenting with fever, cough, and shortness of breath, we've developed a basic assessment algorithm. When the patient is first presenting with fever, cough, and shortness of breath, they can be placed under droplet precautions and given a mask to wear at all times. The workup will start with a test for influenza and other viral respiratory infections, preferably using PCR. If the flu comes back positive, they'll be worked up like a normal flu patient. If the flu comes back negative, you could consider getting a CT. I'm not saying a CT is indicated in all patients with fever, cough, and shortness of breath who are flu negative, but if their respiratory symptoms or their presentation is severe enough to warrant a chest CT and their flu is negative, one can be obtained. It's important for the clinician to provide a good history, such as flu-like illness. If the CT findings are negative, then that patient will go back into a normal workup alg algorithm for respiratory distress or upper respiratory infection. If the CT findings are positive or classic for a viral pneumonia, we will then look for any alternative causes to explain the clinical picture. Maybe the viral PCR panel came back positive for a different virus such as adenovirus or parainfluenza virus. And then they'll be worked up and isolated as clinically indicated. If there is no alternative clinical explanation and the patient is presented with fever and cough, shortness of breath, their viral PCR panels are negative, a chest CT has been obtained, 
and it has classic signs for viral pneumonia, we're recommending that those people be placed into airborne isolation, that the physician responsible for infectious diseases related to COVID-19 be contacted, and a COVID-19 test be obtained. If the clinical picture is unclear, so there may be some alternative explanations for the patient's presentation, but they do have findings consistent with viral pneumonia, we may maintain that patient on droplet precautions and consider COVID-19 testing at the discretion of the infectious disease specialist. In conclusion, I want to emphasize that a chest CT is not necessarily indicated for the diagnosis or management of COVID-19 pneumonia. And far more important than the chest CT findings are practicing good hygiene. Wash your hands. Wash them frequently and for 20 seconds with soap and water. Do not touch your face. The main way this virus will spread is through people touching contaminated surfaces and then touching their eyes or their nose. If you are over 60, consider staying at home as much as possible. Avoid groups, crowds, and travel. This is the recommendation from the CDC. And if you are under 60, and you have medical comorbidities, specifically if you have high blood pressure, diabetes, or known cardiovascular disease, you are at high risk for severe coronavirus-related illness, and you should consider staying at home, avoiding groups, crowds, and travel. And wash your hands. Don't touch your face. The CT findings seem to be highly sensitive for COVID-related infection, but are not specific. The specificity of these findings will increase as the incidence of COVID-19 infection increases within our population. Some studies are suggesting that chest CT is more sensitive for COVID-19 infection than PCR. But that is preliminary data, and we will continue to learn more about this disease process and its imaging findings as we see more cases. Thank you for your time. I hope this was educational.